Welcome and thank you guys for joining us for an info session on the upcoming City Building Express. Woohoo! I'm Ryan Spolar <laughs> and along with me, uh, co pilots uh, Ryan Stevenson over there from CNU Southwest. I'm from Placemaking US. And then our wonderful host and originator of this amazing tour, Nathan Norris from the City Building Partnership, is going to inform us this morning about this wonderful tour. So I was very lucky to go on this tour last year. I heard about it. It's like a kind of a little known secret that's out there that this tour has existed for over 10 years. And I had an amazing time going on it as a placemaker, looking at so many different developments, uh, being able to critique them and really raise the bar of how I evaluate public space from the ground up. And we really wanted to inspire more people to go on the tour this year from our camp, uh, as well as support just this great institution in our field. So I'm going to turn things over to our buddy, Nathan, who's going to tell you a little bit about the history of the tour and where the tours of, of, of CNU passed. And uh, then we'll get into some of the logistics and highlights from this tour and any questions that you guys might have about how this thing rolls out. So with that, uh, Nathan, welcome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ryan. Really appreciate it. Uh, this uh, tour, the first uh, tour that I went on um, that I thought was pretty cool was in 2002. It was a, a long time ago. And then in 2010, I got the idea. I'd love to put that on myself because I learned so much back in 2002. So in 2010, we, uh, we, we started uh, this, this tour back up and it was affectionately named the Magical Mystery Tour um, because it was uh, so much fun. Um, we had to change its name to the City Building Express uh, so that we could get government employees and others who had to get uh, funding through their accounting departments. And the accounting departments didn't wanna pay for the Magical Mystery Tour, but they'd pay for the City Building Express. The, uh, the tour itself, the origin uh, of it was the idea that we wanted to learn as much as we could. And, and so I call it uh, speed dating places. But what we really do is we don't go on the tours of places so much is we tour the lessons of the places. So here you're seeing some uh, imagery from when we were, uh, we've been in New Orleans doing tours. Um, but the idea is that when we go to a place, we see it like it's a speed date. You know, we're just there for a relatively short period of time. Um, on this year's tour, oftentimes it's going to be something like about a, you know, it might be an hour at most where we're at a place. And during that time, we try to digest what can we learn from this place that we can take back home. And then we get on a bus. And during that time on the bus, uh, everybody has the opportunity to learn from one another. What we realized uh, very early was how no one knows it all. You were seeing some pictures of somebody like Andres Duwani, who's as celebrated and accomplished as anybody in the planning world, but he, he likes it because he learns from others. And so that's what I like the most about it is I get on the bus and I can bring someone who knows nothing about a place, but they'll go visit a place and they'll, they'll notice something that completely uh, went by me. So I think the most important thing, Ryan, is just uh, I love the, the camaraderie of the people, and I love the fact that we can learn so much with others as opposed to just by ourselves, and especially if we focus more on how can we take this visit and turn it into a positive for our, uh, you know, when we go back home or when we go and we work in another town or something like that. So that's the quick and dirty of it. The, I did make the mistake in 2010 of allowing everybody uh, to be able to join us who wanted to come. And so that was 110 people. And that was a really dopey idea that has never been replicated since that time. And so we limit it to 50 people on a bus at this uh, point in time. So the first 50 people that sign up will have the opportunity to join us. Does that, uh, anybody have any questions about that? Ryan, does that cover what you expected? You, you have a better lens than I do since I've been on all these tours and last year was your first ask me anything you want. Yeah, so I think that you did a good job of summarizing what this tour is like in that it's very fast paced. You get on the bus and within 20 minutes, we're at our first destination. We're off the bus. We're spending 10 minutes walking around a 
development, an adaptive reuse project, a, uh, a, a housing complex, a downtown center with people responsible for helping bring that project to life. And then after just quick 10 minute you know, summation, we then get to walk around the project. We can go by ourselves, take photos. We can walk with some of the people we've met, or we can kind of trail the person who's our, our local guide and continue to quiz them on some of the more advanced details of that place. So that's kind of the experience of this trip itself. Why don't we pull up the map and then the itinerary for this year so you can start to show how this year's uh, uh, map plays out. Oh, and uh, answering uh, Stevenson's question, yeah, the MMT never got in legal trouble <laughs> for the name. So we're good. Um, as you can see, this year's tour is starting, uh, essentially, we're, we, it's split into three days. The first day is to tour some of the more interesting projects in the DC region. Um, and that's starting with the old 1970s. Do you want me to go through the uh, itinerary, Ryan, at all? Even um, though you put it I don't think the full itinerary is necessary, but if you'd love to pick out some highlights from each okay. day, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, well, the big highlight is we're, we're going to be around the D.C. region. There's a lot to see, so we have to limit what we can see. I'm, I have not been, even though I grew up in the area, I have not been to the wharf, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm look, I have not been to the, the Kentlands in Gaithersburg in probably uh, at least 12 years or so. So I'm interesting, interested in seeing how it is aged. Um, you know, and then uh, Parkman Ness I haven't been to, but that's the, the that's the neat thing. Uh, there's lots of neat stuff that's going to happen. But once again, some people find the time on the bus more interesting than even the touring of the places because of the advanced level of the dialogue. We have a lot of very experienced practitioners that uh, can give away a lot of cool insights that are good. Um, and then the next uh, thing that we, uh, the next day, um, the second day is dedicated to uh, viewing a bunch of projects in uh, Virginia. So we'll go actually to the University of Virginia, uh, where uh, Thomas Jefferson designed the initial campus. And we'll look at that project, which now is a couple of hundred years old. And that'll be pretty cool. We will see a, uh, uh, I'm also looking forward to going to Richmond again and visiting uh, Churchill North which is a, a, a great um, uh, affordable housing mixed use project. And then we'll make it to downtown uh, Williamsburg, which is another sort of interesting uh, uh, place to go. Okay, you're showing, you're taking us to some <laughs> of the places like Ryan. Okay, I'm gonna try not to get uh, seasick or anything, but uh, <laughs> so Williamsburg, then we'll end up in the Tidewater area, um, uh, checking out uh, once again, Williamsburg, uh, East Beach, those are pretty cool projects. And then North Carolina is our third day. And that's a real, that's probably our most diverse day as far as uh, different types of projects. But it's, a, it's another one where we're gonna be seeing things that you don't see very often. Like uh, downtown Williamsburg is kind of interesting because the plan's over 300 years old. East Beach is kind of interesting because essentially it took, a, 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 you know, it, it, it's transform its story of transformation shows what they uh, did well as, all, as well as what they didn't do well, like recognizing how it would transform that whole area. Um, and, and they didn't put any uh, controls in the, the front of it. Um, so anyhow, I could go on and on, but those are the three different days. Um, I'd really like to hear some of the questions or concerns that people have about the tour so that I can then figure out what to spend time talking about. Otherwise I'll talk the entire time. Great. Well, thank you for that brief overview of um, some of the distance that we'll travel, the three big days, the DC Metro Day, the Virginia Day, and the North Carolina Day. Uh, and if people do have questions, this would be a great time to open the floor. I know we have one of our uh, Pathway pals, Tina, who lives in Raleigh, uh, who's you know helping us connect in with the right people on the ground there, and uh, excited about some of the projects in her area. 
Yeah, I, I had a question, I guess, just, uh, I know there's a, it's a time constraint and how much you can see and um, how you might move people around. And I'm, I was trying to think about places here in Raleigh and the constraint of that, like, um, would they ride around on the bus? Because there's different parts of town that could be seen, but trying to fit it into one hour and I, you know, we don't have like little carts like I saw you had in New Orleans. So I just, I didn't know uh, if it's better just to get off in one place or if it would be possible to move people. We generally pay extra for the uh, awesome driver. I'm hoping that we get an awesome driver on the bus. And what happens usually is the bus drivers love our group so much because we're not rowdy, we're enthusiastic, we're interesting, doing fun stuff that they generally will break their rules to pick us up or drop us off wherever we want. Okay. We then give people options about how they uh, can get around. For example, when we did the historical peninsula of Charleston, um, the bus kept people on the bus who didn't want to walk a couple of miles during the, the it was blazing hot, but some people decided they were going to they were going to go do a two and a half mile walk uh, during the uh, the time we were there. So we give uh, chances for people to do things. Sometimes we get around on transit if it makes sense. The problem is, is the time constraints usually make the bus yeah. the, the best thing going. And okay. as Ryan said, our general approach is that uh, every place we visit is usually worth a couple of uh, a couple hours of, of discussion, we just don't have it in order to hit all the different types of projects we wanna hit. So we limit the, the guide to essentially about 10 minutes per project where they tell us all the lessons we should be able to learn. And then if you wanna keep learning more about that project, you just stick with them or you just run off on your own and do whatever it is that you wanna do. But it is a huge time constraint. The good news is the time constraint really makes us focus on what's most important. And that's the that's sort of the challenge. So this is not like a normal tour where, oh, I'm gonna tour historic Williamsburg. Well, you could tour historic Williamsburg for a day, right? Yeah. There are people who do that tour for a day. Um, but the most we've ever spent at any place is two hours. And that was, you know, and, and those are some gigantic okay. projects. So, so and, that's how that works. And it sounds really rushed because I know Tina and I and Madeline, who's here, we went on a road trip and we met with placemakers across the country and we spent hours and hours with them and it was wonderful but the way that you have this set you really do get a lot of the value in a much more compressed period of time so I, I mean we didn't build lifelong friendships maybe like we did on our road trip but you got incredible information you got a perspective and we left there with so many different examples of exciting things to go home and talk about. And with that, um, you know, I wanted to bring up, you have Kelly Rich here, who's an accomplished Main Street Manager and Business Improvement District Director. And have people like that gone on the tour before and, and gained benefit from it, Nathan, that you can recall? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, th there's two crowds that gravitate toward this. Well, I, well let, let, let me put this way. You know, and I, I ran uh, the Downtown Development Authority uh, uh, in Lafayette, Louisiana before. So I sort of understand the IDA crowd and the Main Street crowd and sort of the new urbanism crowd that oftentimes populates. All of them have different strengths. Uh, people like Kelly are the people who know how to get stuff done. All right, which is a different group than those who just dream up whatever, you know, some people just want to dream up great ideas, other people actually get it done. And so that's what I love the most is that it doesn't matter where you are, or what your perspective is, nobody knows it all. So that's what I think that it opens your eyes up to what different people with different perspectives are thinking. And so we have, you know, typically the, the, the most common people are going to be developers, because they want the free advice from the leading practitioners. They don't have to pay hardly anything to get all the free advice. Number two is then you're gonna have people who are planners, um, uh, and then urban designers and architects and stuff. They like to come on because they like to visit these places. They've heard about them, but they may not have seen them. Then you're gonna have uh, uh, everything from students 
to uh, we've had transportation engineers to uh, politicians or uh, we usually have a couple of politicians on the bus, which provide an interesting uh, uh, conversation about some issues. So it's really that it's it's really meant for everybody. Um, I've I've taken my I, I took my son who has no knowledge about this stuff on it two years uh, in a row, and uh, he he gave insights that the rest of us didn't see. So it's a little bit of everything, but I do believe that the um, uh, if your your full time job is worrying about how can I improve a place, there's no more efficient way to actually learn than this. The, the only complaint we really get usually, the only complaint is, Nathan, that was a little intense because it's intellectually, I mean, it's it starts at eight, you're not done till you're about ready to go to sleep. You're, you know, it, it can be a little tiring. The longest we've gone is five days. The typical is uh, uh, these days has been about two and a half to three days like this one. So Nathan, you brought up a lot of interesting stuff there. So one is, you brought up people bring their children, their pets, their spouses on this tour. Oh yeah, that's some of the best things. You know, once again, if you don't know anything and you get on that bus with a bunch of nerds that can't stop talking about place, you're going to notice something they didn't. And then at the same time, those people love it because they they learn so much in such a short amount of time. And then the other thing you you brought up is that. You know, this is really great for practitioners in their communities to invite their developers, invite their planners, um, invite their urbanists, activists to come on this trip because they're creating the real estate product and in the, in your community. And the more information they have about what's out there, mistakes not to make, um, and inspiring ways that that these places are coming to life and how they're aging over time. But that's invaluable information that can help the future of your community from its built environment perspective. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on one thing there that uh, comes to mind. Number one is that um, this is a uh, this is not a for profit venture. Okay, so we're we do it because we love it. One of the reasons that I wanted to do it was to provide a you know I had uh, let's say developer friends or clients. They didn't want to go to a planning conference for three or four days. They couldn't get away for four days, but they could get away for two days or maybe three days if they were going to learn a lot. And so fortunately, since you asked that question, Ryan, you've got my favorite developer in the world who joined us, who has been on many of the Magical Mystery Tours, Patty Steinschneider uh, from uh, beautiful uh, New, uh, New York. And, and uh, so he keeps coming on it. Patty, why do you keep coming on it? I don't even know why. You got to unmute yourself though first. Um, so a little bit quick. Um, one of the reasons, and this applies to CNU as well as to the uh, City Exchange or Magical Mystery Tour, as I prefer to call it. Most of my days, when I'm sitting in a room with people, I can convince myself that I'm the smartest person in the room. When I go to CNU Congress or I go on the Magical Mystery Tour, I realize that everybody else on that is smarter than I am. It is so such a relief. It feels like there's hope. Um, a conversation will start about something we just saw, which will lead to something that someone on the bus has done, which then gets triggered by somebody else who tried to do that saying, well, I tried to do that, but this is what we ran into. And within 15 minutes, you're having an in-depth conversation of really meaningful um, things about what it takes to make good places. Um, and the, the opportunity to see the stuff together and to talk about it in real time right after that is, it's invaluable. It's, it's so interesting. And the ones that I've been on, they're just really well orchestrated. The job that, uh, you know. <laughs> There's my son. <laughs> the job grown up now. Yeah, that Nathan and others have done in the past of putting the stuff together. Um, it's it's curated properly. You, 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 you're going, you often are seeing something. You're not really sure why you're seeing that right now. But you're then going on to the next thing. And all of a sudden you start realizing, well, now by the third time I'm seeing something, I'm experiencing 
a issue in the design world from different perspectives so that I can in real time with the people on this bus talk about what worked, what didn't work, and how do we make this be part of what we get to do on our daily basis. Usually about this point, um, Nathan would say, uh, Patty, there are other people who want to speak too. <laughs> No, no. Patty is actually one of the great values of uh, attending uh, th this tour to learn. You know, I learn so much from him every year and he keeps coming back. I love it. All right. Other questions that people have. Kelly, did I answer Ryan's question correctly or was that pretty lame? No, I thought it was very um, explanational. That's a word, uh, but no, I'm 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 gonna have to uh, look and see if it's in my budget uh, just to try to gauge the airfare situation because I'd be flying from Arkansas, um, and so. But I'm definitely interested in hitting this up. It sounds like a fantastic opportunity, and truthfully, just the relationship and um, you know the camaraderie and the conversations I think will really spark some inspiration for me to bring back here. It's it, yeah. You know, one of the ways when people have difficulty figuring out how to finance it, the easiest way usually is to find somebody to go with them from wherever they are, who can help uh, subsidize it in some way, or better, you know, articulate the value of you going on it. So hopefully that's something you can consider as well. Great. And then also with Placemaking US partnering this year, I think beyond just looking at the built product, we'll be really inquiring about the programming and the finishing touches and that those softer layers that, you know, Kelly, we do so much on as well. So that'll be really exciting to both see what's working and also use our muscle on what's missing in all these different contexts. Other questions? Comments? Patty? Um, I, don't, I just, I think uh, what Ryan just said is, is spot on. One of the other things that uh, is usually part of the format is we'll get to places and there'll be somebody there to meet us who is intimately um, familiar with what we're looking at. Often the person who's either designed it or built it or something. I mean, last year in Oklahoma on the way um, to get there, we... Uh, we stopped and looked at, I'm trying to, uh, it's uh, Monty Anderson, right? Monty Anderson. Yeah, I knew yeah. it was an Anderson last night. the highlight. Yeah, and, and, and seeing this work that he had, uh, several projects that he had done and understanding how they had evolved with time where he started with one thing and then moved on to another thing and, you know, how he has tracked it. Um, was it, It's the kind of thing you can't get unless you're going to see it. And I've pretty much seen everything that I can see within a maybe 50 miles, 75, 100 mile radius, um, getting the excuse to go someplace that I wouldn't otherwise necessarily go and be just have having the bus just take me there with a bunch of fun people. It's just it's remarkable. It's a it's an opportunity that's it's really difficult to, uh, you know, make create in any other way I could I could spend a tremendous amount of money trying to duplicate that on my own uh, with one or two people and I wouldn't get anywhere near as much out of it as I get with this. And the, you know, everything's pretty well, you know, you get your hotel room, you get your, you get everything except the plane fare, really. You know, we get box lunches, there's the music, there's the dancing, the, you know, all the excitement. <laughs> We don't put the dancing in the brochure, but uh, Ryan started off this this infomercial with a little. Uh, he was getting jiggy with the music there in the beginning. So my guess is we'll have even more dancing than in the past, Patty. We had well, an instrumental well, version sure. of uh, Double Dutch Bus. Well, the the challenge is we you you've convinced me that you are being more um, accommodating of the bigger needs when you do the regular bus. But the, the favorite one I was on was when we were sitting on the party bus and we had the dancing poles and stuff. And what was cool there is you have benches with everybody facing one another. So it was really, it was easy to have the dialogue because that's, it, it's almost, if you haven't been on this before, um, it's hard to imagine what the dialogue on the bus is like. 
when you get on the bus and it and there's one of the things you know Nathan will do this if Howard's there he'll do it I do it it's we don't let the person be the guy who passes the mic on and doesn't say something we don't we don't make people talk but we encourage it I want to hear what that guy who hasn't said anything what what is he thinking about it and, and it'll usually be something like well this is so different than what I normally deal with I'm not I'm trying to figure out how to put this together. And that leads to an entirely different conversation with different ideas. In, in you know, honor of, of that on the bus, let's let's close this out by hearing something from each person, just like passing the mic on the bus. So Stevenson, what do you want a concluding thought on, you've been on this tour before, you're helping put it together this year. What do you want people to know? What what is, How has it helped you in your career? What's your concluding thought here to add? Um. So last year was my first year on it, and I had a unique experience because I was in Florida at Seaside, and uh, I met Andres Duani there, who was the original designer of Seaside, and he told me he couldn't go, so he helped me. He basically sponsored me to get on that trip, and then um, I go to the Congress for the New Urbanism every year, and um, you know I get to engage with the people that I, I love talking to, but on the magical mystery tour we're like stuck on a bus together for hours at a time and so i'm getting like serious quality time with my heroes and so it's a great value for me uh for that reason and then again it's just like a it's a fire hose of learning lessons and it's a really incredible experience so it's it's really uh worth it uh to anyone who's interested in going i'm really excited this year uh that we're going to be visiting the lawn uh at the UVA campus on Memorial Day, uh, which was designed by Thomas Jefferson. So I'm really excited about that. Fabulous. And that's one of those rare UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the USA. So that's so cool because we don't have very many of them. Uh, Valerie, did you want to share something about what you've learned or if you're excited to come or share this with fellow uh, per participant pr practitioners? <laughs> um. Well, it sounds really exciting. I took a class with Monty and Ryan. What has it been a year or two years? Oh my God, <laughs> like yeah. a while ago. A while ago. <laughs> yeah, um, it sounds really exciting. I just was telling Ryan it's the day after my birthday and I have big plans on this particular weekend. So I'm not going to make it this year, unfortunately, but um, I'm kind of bummed out about that. I'd really like to participate. So I hopefully will keep in touch and learn from you this year and maybe see you next year. Valerie, we can make this bus be the best birthday party you've ever had. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Patty, Patty will jump out of a cake for you. You uh, know, my poor go. husband has been in my life uh, of architecture and planning for years, and I don't know, he made birthday plans for me this year that if I tell him we're going to turn it into architecture, he might, he might leave. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. Well, thanks for joining us. And then Medina, did you have any questions? Uh, you came in a little late, so we want to make sure you got everything or is there something you're burning to know? Um, no, I don't think so. No, thank you for this. This was really great. I am really interested. I feel like this is one of those situations where I want to ask questions, but I don't know what I don't know. But um, yeah, this all, this all sounds really great. I'm really interested in tours like this. Um, yeah, maybe I'll follow up with some more questions later. Where are you up. joining us from or how do you practice? Um, I actually found out about creative placemaking just through my kind of my job uh, working in Calgary for a nonprofit. And then I actually started my own nonprofit and I've been doing creative placemaking around the city. Um, we just had an event just this past February, we did one and then we did one in uh, like the summer before. So I'm just kind of just learning about it and I'm just starting to understand just the importance of it and I what really interested me was the idea of creative placemaking kind of like combining a social cause with the aspect of entertainment and culture and the culture driving like this like philanthropic kind of local community I guess you could say so yeah I'm just very curious and I guess yeah and I also now love architecture just because of this kind of work you start to really appreciate like the buildings and the history and everything so I think the whole thing is just is really great so I'm really glad that this exists <laughs> wow well that's really cool yeah we're going to be visiting some you know uh downtown centers uh adaptive reuse industrial projects that have become creative hubs 
and also scenarios where people are trying to build new town centers and new environments and still keep the dynamism of the real you know, city and creativity and all that. So it'd be so interesting to see the whole spectrum of ways that people are coming together in place uh, like that. And then um, Madeline, did you wanna share uh, your interest in the tour? I know you've heard about the tour and uh, you're involved a lot in infrastructure equity uh, nationally. Um, yes, I have heard about the tour, and I think the thing I'm most excited to see is um, Ryan had told me that right after you go to a place, everybody on the bus critiques it. Is that what you told me? There's some kind of like a, a critical element that I thought was really interesting. Um, um, I, I, had a, I have a background in philosophy, so I've always been interested in um, really just being in dialogue around these topics so it sounds exciting and I look forward to what's coming up great and excellent Suen I don't know if you're there or uh oh there she's coming to Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> um this is really exciting I'm actually based I'm actually sitting 10 minutes away from the wharf um so Nathan, you mentioned the wharf, um, and it's actually what I just got an email from placemaking. I guess I was on the list and it sounded cool. So I, I joined a webinar and I'm excited about it. I'm actually thinking about registering if there are seats available. Um, and what, what was I going to say? I do have a few questions. Um, I was looking at the website and it says like, you know, there are different price points for like double occupancy versus single occupancy. I don't have anyone else to go with me. Um, which is fine. Um, but I'm wondering if, like, you know, if I choose, let's say double occupancy, I'll be like randomly assigned to a room with somebody. Um, I just want to know how that looks like. Um, and also I can understand the concern. <laughs> not a concern. I just yeah. wanna... you don't want to hook up with Patty. Um, but no, the uh now we we handle all those on an individual basis and we work with the people on that. Okay, okay, cool. So we'll figure it out one way or another so it works out. All right. Um, and, and yeah, this is, this is really cool. I think starting in DC is definitely convenient for me. And I'm actually not very familiar with anything south of um, Williamsburg, Virginia. So um, it's going to be a learning opportunity. I'm actually a graduate student at Georgetown studying urban planning, and I work with mutual aids here in DC. So um, all the things that you guys discuss, I think are definitely of my interest. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Fantastic. I hope and, you can make uh, it. We'll actually get arrived to DC on that Saturday, the day before the tour. And usually there's some fun pre-tour activities. So we're even looking at some of our other awesome projects and relationships we have in the DC area. So if you follow up on that email, we can kind of coordinate on, you know, a really great day in DC, even before we start the tour on the, the Sunday. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you guys, you, you mentioned community partners and people like designers and architects might show up at each of the site. <clears throat> what are your plans for the wharf? Because um, if you guys want also the help with connecting with Southwest Bid, um, which is in charge of the wharf, um, I could help with that. I don't know. Yeah. If you guys have are, you, are you connected to Uwe Brandeis, Brandeis at Georgetown? Yeah, I'm, I actually work for him. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. We're, we, we're in touch with Uwe, so let's all just be in touch, and then we, we'd oh, love that's to, so great. to okay. uh, sync that up with you and then have and then kidnap you away on our the rest of our tour. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Uwe, Uwe is amazing. I think you've got the right person to talk to. Yeah. The other method to deal with the w, double occupancy thing is you find somebody that actually wants to come with you. So you, you just around. bring a friend. <laughs> it's a bring a friend thing. Okay. I'll look around. Yeah. But well, that's always, we've never had an issue with it. Just so you know, we've always figured out something that everybody's happy with. All right. All right. So I, this was, uh, yeah, it was a dark someone just coming in. Yeah, I was wondering whether Tina got to speak. Yeah, I spoke a little bit earlier before you came in, Patty. But yeah, I'm down here in Raleigh and I'm working with Ryan to help um, schedule the 
the Raleigh visits. Excellent. And I guess, Ryan, I'll follow up with you on maybe details about that. Yeah, we're very excited about that leg with you. We almost have too much to do. So we're, uh, you know, Might have, it's going to be fun. <laughs> have to edit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have more questions, go on the city building website. You email, The email goes right to Nathan. R the Ryans are here to help with any questions or plug things in as well. And we expect a smooth ride, uh, an interesting lot of lessons. And I, I believe we're already well on our way on so selling tickets. And so you definitely want to get your seat. I actually was on the waiting list last year and uh, somebody dropped out and I was able to get in. And as you heard from Ryan, he got also a, a Willy Wonka kind of golden ticket to go as well. So it is something that you definitely want to lock in more in advance because you don't want to get left off the bus. For sure. <laughs> Good to see everybody. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks. See you guys later. All right.